Tom, good morning. We're going to jump straight into this and, and ask you a little bit about your background leading up to, to your current role. So I uh, worked for 10 years in the state sector in a very different variety of settings, different sort of experiences. Uh, my background has been in through the teaching of religious studies or kind of theology and philosophy. Uh, but I've always had an interest in digital technology. And throughout my career, I've had opportunities to get involved in kind of the advancements of that, be in different kind of groups within schools and things like that. So it's been a natural kind of progression for me to kind of move into that sort of area. Um, I was very happy at my last school, but I saw an advert for Halebury and uh, it's one of those opportunities you don't really want to, to pass up. And so remember when I came here for my interview, I was really sold on the academic vision and the kind of uh, the, the pathway for me in my terms of my career. So it was an easy decision to make. We like to think we embrace technology here at Halebury. There's a a one-to-one -one device policy. How, how's that working? How do you see that? And is that is that something that, that is working really well? We feel it's really important that our pupils do have devices with them. Obviously, there are other schemes like bring your own device and so on and so forth. But for us, a one-to-one -one device works really well because we want consistency of devices across the school for pupils. We want them to have the same sort of experience. And we just want something that will work off, off straight away for them. And so actually for them to have the same devices as their teachers and for us to know that we can share devices easily, we can manage devices easily, and actually we can support them with their learning is really, really important. That's the, the hardware, if you like. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the Halebury approach to AI mm. and where we are now, maybe where we're going. Like everybody, AI uh, kind of caught us, uh, not necessarily off guard, but we were perhaps surprised by how quickly things began to radically change and develop in the world of AI. And we knew we wanted to be very proactive in that world straight mm -hmm. away. And so behind the scenes, uh, myself and a couple of colleagues, we were working for about six months, kind of looking at different AI tools and trialing different sorts of approaches to AI to make sure that when we then approached the whole staff body, we were confident in our vision uh, in terms of what we wanted to do. And that also we were able to provide some very quick tips and tricks and training to staff so they can begin to engage with the AI tools as well. It's one of those things where we know that in six months' time, things were moved ahead very, very quickly. So we want to be able to be adaptive and responsive to when, the, to when those changes happen, really. Um, in terms of what we've been doing, as I say, we've been looking at certain tools. There's been an explosion of lots of different companies and tools saying this is the AI solution. And we want to make sure that we make confident choices in the ones that we explore. So is that part at. of your job then to, to kind of assess what's coming out, coming out, what's new and what's going to be relevant for the, for the people here in the school? Yes, trying to stay ahead of the AI game is very, is a very difficult task, but actually making sure that I am keeping myself educated in the changes and that I'm able to kind of disseminate that and pass that on to staff as well. So they feel confident that when it comes to a tool that we think we can uh, invest in, that they that will actually improve their quality of work. We're not afraid of the advancements in AI. We're very much embracing it as a school for the, for the benefits of the pupils and for the staff. When AI first kind of hit the news, institutions were banning AI. They were kind of blocking access mm -hmm. to uh, apps like ChatGPT and so on and so forth. But that's not an approach we wanted to take. But by blocking these uh, applications, we knew that pupils would still be accessing them, uh, actually, just without our permission, and then without actually our support and our guidance guidance with that. Mm. And we know that these tools are here to stay. AI is not going to go anywhere. It's only going to grow and change. And therefore, we think it's important that we support pupils along that journey, that we teach them how to use these things responsibly, ethically and effectively. And as well, the same for the staff as well, mm. actually, that staff can see the benefits on their workload and how it can begin to impact the, the work that they are doing. What about the parents? How do we get them involved? How mm. do we keep them engaged with that? How do we support them in this process too? So it's really important that we keep parents informed as well, because if you're not necessarily clued into the AR world, it, things seem to have happened very quickly. Lots of changes have happened. And what often we find is parents contact us and say, my, my son or daughter is actually in this material. I don't understand how it works. You know, please help. So we felt it's really important that we bring parents along the journey with us as a school. So we've run a parent webinar mm -hmm. uh, where we informed parents. We're, first of all, some information about what AI is and the impact on education and what's happening. And then we then inform them as to what our direction of travel will be, what tools we're investing in and where we're going next. And then from that, uh, some really uh, important pairs of feedback has been that they would like some more ongoing training in these tools that we selected for our pupils. So that's something that we're committing to over the next academic year as well. What's next? Mm. What, what are the exciting things out there that perhaps our pupils can be looking forward to engaging with in the future? How, how, is it, how are things going to change? What kinds of things might mm. we look out for? Well, trying to predict the future of AI is, is a very, very difficult, is a very yeah. difficult yeah. complex task. Um, there are a few kind of hints as to where, where the next steps are. Uh, with ChatGPT, they are moving more and more into the educational sector. 
uh, and, and we're seeing kind of the arrival of things like GPTs, which is customizable chatbots. And I think for education, that's a really interesting uh, move where potentially we could see uh, textbooks move online, for example, where they, then pupils are able to kind of talk and engage uh, with the material they are doing. Uh, teachers creating customizable chatbots, revision chatbots, and so on and so forth. Yeah. I think in terms of the big developments for AI over the next 12 months, we're going to see more and more AI wearables come out onto the market. You may have seen that Ray-Bans have got their glasses, yes, for example. Yeah. The Humane pin, uh, pin is coming yeah. out as well, a device you can wear. Yeah. You've got the Rabbit R1 as well. So all these new devices are coming out, which are kind of incorporating AI into them. And that's really before the kind of big hitters like Apple have moved into the AI world. We're still waiting to hear what Apple have got in store. Obviously, our pupils have Apple devices. The implications yeah. for us is really, really interesting of where they go next. I would expect to see something like Siri get a significant AI upgrade mm -hmm. in the future as well. So we're, we're trying to stay abreast of the information, try and get ahead of the game. But as always, these sort of things, we're being caught out by surprise all the time by yeah, AI. Fair enough. And just to be clear, I am talking to the real Tom Wade here. rather uh, than No, a... you're not, actually. This is not me. No. Uh, Tom, tell me a little bit about whether we have any overarching uh, underlying principles that, that uh, help us to, to frame this, this work with AI. We thought it was really important to have an AI policy in place, actually, that, that our staff and pupils could access from the very beginning, back in September. Uh, this is being updated regularly as things begin to grow and change. Mm -hmm. uh, but a kind of a guiding motto that we've had kind of underpinning all of that is this idea of process versus product. And that's exactly. our kind of mantra we've been giving to pupils. And it's the idea that actually we are happy for them to use AI tools in their learning experience. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the learning process. So actually, if they're given a task, we're happy for them to use tools like ChatGPT to perhaps develop their understanding mm -hmm. of, a, of a concept that they are researching. However, when it comes to the final product, what we want is them to be confident that what they're handing in is representative of their own work. Mm -hmm. And so okay. for us, it's, it's what's really important is the process can involve AI, but the final product is the pupil's own work. Mm -hmm. I think that gives us then the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. It's supportive of education, but ensuring that what they are uh, giving to their teacher is their own work. Okay. And in terms of the, some, some of these uh, platforms that we're using are uh, require kind of permissions and sort of age limits and things like that. Mm. Have, have we gone about that with the parents? Uh, so we've done lots of research into what tools we think are appropriate for the pupils we have and the age ranges that we have. And we've actually decided to start at the age of 13 upwards. So for us, that's removes year nine mm -hmm. upwards, uh, are allowed to use AI tools within the classroom and for their prep. And what we've then done is we've investigated and looked into four specific tools that we think are appropriate for them mm -hmm. to use in their education and in their learning. And so those tools uh, we presented to the pupils. I've run assemblies and various other programs with the pupils to, to train them in these mm -hmm. uh, tools and let them know what they are. Uh, and then when it comes to the parents, uh, we've been doing parents a webinar with that, introducing these tools explicitly to the parents as well. And as part of that process, we then requested parental permission for them to use these. Some of these tools, if they are under 18, do require parental permission. Mm -hmm. And we think it's really important as an educational institute that we have that permission from parents mm -hmm. before we allow pupils to use these tools. And we're very fortunate to be, to be sat here in, in the new science technology Ooh. building. It's a beautiful, beautiful building. How, how does SciTech facilitate those kind of um, innovative learning and, and the, the you know, research element that we're sat in part of the research building now? Ooh. How does that all fit with AI? So I think, first of all, it, it, it's an amazing place. And I think as a pupil, when you walk into SciTech straight away, you know it's a, an interesting place of learning. Uh, I was lucky enough to be part of a, a StanX evening uh, just last week where I was learning how to dissect certain uh, bugs and looking at fruit flies and things like that. And I was blown away by a pupil's knowledge, their confidence in using these tools. I was rubbish at using the tools, uh, but they were really, really good. And I think have them having access to these sorts of tools is amazing. And it's only going to enhance their education and give them experiences that I could only have dreamt of uh, when I was younger. In terms of AI, there's something we are looking at developing more and more within SciTech. We've got the VR room, mm -hmm. for example. We've got opportunities like that. So I think that's something we're going to see really grow over the next couple of years. You live on site as a, you know, as a resident member of staff. What, what's, that, what's that like? And what do you, what do you enjoy about, uh, about living on site Ooh. here and, and in Hertfordshire? So we feel incredibly lucky uh, to live on site. Uh, as you said, I, I'm a father of three. And so actually for a family to live on, on an amazing kind of 500 acre site like Halebury is, is something that we could only really have dreamt of uh, mm. a couple of years ago, actually. Having access to the woods, having access to, to the, just the location, the facilities that we have with the swimming pool, various things like that it is amazing. My, my youngest daughter uh, once um, commented that it's been like living at centre parks uh, at times, just to all the amazing facilities that I have access to. So when I was making the decision to come work at Halebury, the opportunity to live here was one of the biggest selling points for us. 
and the food's pretty good. Uh, any any favourite dishes that you're willing to share with us? Well, my suits have got significantly tighter uh, <laughs> since working here, I think it's fair to say, due oh, to yeah. the quality of the food. I think, though, my favourite meal is the chocolate pear crumble. Okay. That is the sort of pudding where I usually try and be good on my puddings, mm -hmm. but when that's being served, I cannot miss the opportunity to, to use it. Just, right. just don't tell my wife, Fair please. enough. That's right. No, don't worry. It's, your secret's safe with me. Thank you. Um, and uh, you, most teachers here, um, the expectation they're involved in the kind of the pastoral side of, of school life as well, and, and understand that you're a tutor in Russell Door. So being a low school tutor is a brilliant opportunity here. I get to meet my tutees every single morning, have a chat with them, set them up for the day, make sure they're, they're okay. And they are very organised and very efficient mm -hmm. in what they're doing. Uh, so that's a really lovely experience. Uh, being part of Russell Door is, is a great opportunity to get them involved in the school early on. They've got lots of opportunities of clubs and things like that for them to do. And it's really exciting to see some of them make such good use of their school days as well. In terms of other co-curricular areas, I've been involved in kind of the film and media side of things here. Mm -hmm. We have a, a Wednesday activity called Haleybury TV, where we make short films and, and promotional videos and things like that for the school. And we kind of train our pupils up on how to use really cutting edge equipment mm -hmm. as well. Fantastic. Tom, it's been really interesting talking to you today. I've got one more question, which is mm -hmm. actually to set up for, for our next uh, interview, which is to, to think, is there a question that you think we could ask um, our next uh, interviewee? Mm -hmm. I think it would be good to ask them what their favourite Haleybury event is that happens throughout okay. the year. Yeah, very good. Thank, thank you very much indeed, Tom, for your time today. Thank you very um, much. Bye -bye.